All right, so this is gonna be the third and final installment in my series of videos where I built this uh, DIY tool chest uh, and it also serves as a miter bench. Today, what we're gonna get done is we're gonna build the drawers, get those installed. And we're gonna build this cupboard door, get the shelves installed. Um, this basically has become my tool chest where I am storing all of my tools and uh, hardware and other things. All my power tools are in the cupboard on this side. Um, if you want to go back uh, and check out the previous videos, we built the downdraft dust collection system in the previous video. We built the whole carcass and uh, basic frame in the first video. This has an extendable work surface on this side. Um, and yeah, if you're enjoying this series, then uh, you know, subscribe to my channel for more builds like this. I'm currently working on a table saw bench uh, like this. Share it. I'd really appreciate it if you guys leave me some comments. I know this is not the most polished build you're gonna see, so feel free to flame out on me and tell me that this is not the best build you've ever seen and I will be happy to agree with you. You know, if any other questions or comments that you might have, it's really cool to get uh, responses from the viewers. So with that, this, this introduction uh, taken care of, let's get to work on uh, finishing this project so that we can get on with the next one. Under the miter saw is just going to be a cabinet with a door and uh, some shelves. So my idea for this is that my idea for this is that I want to be able to store power tools. So um, yeah, I'm going to have I guess two shelves that are 10 inches apart, and then this sort of little space here where the, the dust thing is. So to put these on roughly right, just clamping my square onto here. And yeah, uh, so these little, uh, these are just scraps. They're about an inch wide, but the, really, to be honest, the width was determined more by like the scraps that I had. And they're 12 inches long, which is also primarily determined by the size of the scrap I had. So they don't, definitely don't need to hold a shelf up. They don't need to be the whole length. So um, let's see. But I think I will roughly center them. So this is 19 deep. So that means three and a half inches. And I will center them. secure these with one inch screws because this is half inch plywood going into three quarter inch plywood. Good. All right, so I've got my little kind of shelf brackets in on both sides. Uh, like I said, I, this project's using up a lot of scrap. So this is scrap from making drawers. So this shelf is going to be two pieces because that's what I have. And the lower shelf can be one of those. Again, that's what I have. So there we go. Shelves where I can, uh, um, yeah, store power tools. So I guess the next thing is to get a door on this. Okay, uh, to make the cabinet door in the tradition of using scraps, I didn't have a piece of either half inch or three quarter inch that was the right size, but I had some that were the right length. So I'm just gonna use my biscuit joiner to make a kind of you know door with styles. And I'm gonna put three quarter inch on the outside, and half inch on the inside, so you know it has a little bit of a little bit of uh, manufactured style to it. So um, these biscuit joiners are great. What you can do is it has a bit of a fence on here. And so you can yeah, set it based on the thickness of your material. It'll, when you plunge it, it'll put the blade. And you 
plunge it, it'll put the blade right in the center of the material. And so, um, again, uh, in the tradition of just using stuff up, I have a bunch of uh, number 20 biscuits, which are probably a bit overkill for this job, but it's what I have, and I don't really fancy going out and buying any more. So the way I usually do this is I kind of dry align everything. And then if you just kind of make a mark across, you can use that mark You can use that mark across to line up the holes you make on each board, right? So we're going to put a biscuit here, 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 and here. Uh, again, I'm only doing this to use of scraps. I think it would be perfectly fine, if not easier, to just use a single piece. But I don't want to spend too much money on this. All right, and then, yeah, you just get some glue into the hole. Biscuit. and then you just clamp it. All right, and here we are down on the ground. Um, for a while I was thinking about, you know, pocket holes and maybe putting a uh, half inch inside the three quarter inch, but I had this scrap of quarter inch plywood got MDF in the middle. I think this is maple if I remember, but I'm literally, if I just cut it to size, I'm just going to glue it on the back. For good measure. All right, and with this glued, uh, I'm going to put these five-eighths of an inch brad in just to give it a little bit more strength. All right, so here's the glued door. Nothing fancy. Um, just, yeah, three quarter inch styles from scrap and quarter inch plywood on the back, glued and some brad sold together. The next step is I have these cup hinges uh, left over from another project. You know, sometimes these come in packages, it's like 12 or something. So, what's this? 27. That means if I put them... Be 7 inches down. All right, because this, dividing this into thirds would be 9. So not quite centered. I have this jig, another Craig jig, for drigging, drilling these 35 millimeter uh, pocket hinge holes. Um, this is great, it comes with a Forstner bit uh, and it comes with this ability here, which is probably hard to see, but you can set the offset from the side to three, four, five, or six millimeters by turning this. I've already set this to three because that's what the manufacturer requires. So yeah, you just put this in and you can line it up with the marks and it makes a perfect cup hole. So because it's got this guide, and this comes out, right? So you can really line it up. So put it on your drill, put it into place. Make sure the jig is all 
flush and lined up with the mark that we made. Perfect. So, line it up with the next mark, clip it in place. This is a pretty cheap drill. Um, claims to be 20 volts, but I think it's probably not. So obviously a beefier drill would be better for this, but as you can see, a cheap drill does get the job done. What's cool about this jig is it also has two little holes here for uh, pilot holes for the of the drill. Probably should clamp this. But I left my clamps inside. There you are. Perfect cup holes. With perfectly straight pilot holes to guarantee, right? Because you could put these on crooked, but by having these pilot holes drilled off of the jig, you're pretty much guaranteeing that you'll have the hinge on straight and you've got perfect pocket holes with a $30 jig instead of an expensive drill press. Um, yeah, and you can also, depending on the depth, this collar goes up and down. So um, I had this set to the depth of these, but if you have, for whatever reason, really deep ones, you can raise this and you can go actually uh, deeper cup holes. All right, so here's where my microphone battery died and I didn't notice. Um, the cabinet door is meant to be actually attached to sort of some framing that's on the outside of the cabinet, such that the door is kind of outside and flush with that framing. And go look at your kitchen cabinets. This is almost certainly how they're, they're hung. But I wanted this to be inside the cabinet, kind of flush with the carcass itself. So what I'm holding in my hands here is the, the, the workaround that I came to. It's a piece of three quarter inch plywood, about an inch long, and the height of the cabinet with a piece of half inch, uh, glued and screwed to it. And so it's sort of in this kind of L shape. The three quarter inch plywood is what I'm going to attach to the carcass. And then the door can attach to the half inch piece. And I had to do some cutouts on the shelves to make room for this to fit inside. I did that off camera. So you can kind of see right here. And then I measured the depth of the door, which is uh, I think one inch and uh, mark that and then I can attach this to the side of the carcass and it will give me something to attach the door to and the door will be inset uh, the way I want it to be um, when it's attached. So just like everything I'm going to uh, drill some countersunk holes in the three quarter inch plywood to attach this to the carcass. I'm actually gonna do quite a few holes just to make sure that the, this can carry the weight of the door and that it's very securely attached. The screws I'm using are uh, one and a quarter, right? So they're going through the three quarter inch uh, little brace and into three quarter inch plywood on the other side. So the hope is this will hold the, the door on really strong. So here's the cabinet now with the uh, hinges attached and you can see that I had to cut. Definitely would have been smart to uh, put the hinges not where the shelf was. So 
think about that if you're doing this build. But those little uh, brackets are meant to kind of attach to the half inch plywood that's now sticking out from the three quarter inch that we secured in the previous uh, footage. And so two screws will get this held in place. And the, um, the attachments here have kind of like those oval shaped things. So what I'm doing is, So what I'm doing is I'm sort of attaching this at the top so that if I have to, I can lift the door up in the thing. And in fact, you can see I used just a little bit of a wrench to lift the door up off the bottom of the thing. That little piece of metal there you can see at the bottom. Screw D is tight, and the door was more or less in place at this point. So it does have ways to adjust it. There's a screw at the back which will actually rock the door kind of in and out uh, from the cabinet. And then there's a screw on the front that will lift it up and down. So you can use these to make fine adjustments to make sure that the door is seated exactly how you want it. Uh, in this case, I wanted it to, like I said, to be inside the carcass and sort of flush with the front of it. And there we go. There's the cabinet door, all done. Sorry for having to do the audio on post, but hopefully this part of the video still makes sense. Okay, so if you're following along, this is 19 deep, 25 and 5 eighths wide. Um, and then don't forget, in terms of the width, right, so 25 and 5 eighths, that uh, my drawer slides take an inch off of that. Right there, yeah, half an inch wide, and there's obviously gonna be two of them. So then that becomes 24 and 5 eighths. And then, like I said, I've got like 6.2 inches if I divide this space by five. I guess maybe I'll make the drawers like five inches high, and then I've got room. So if the drawers are five inches deep, that gives me plenty of room to space them out. And I really don't want like deep drawers where I'm scrambling for like layers of tools. I'm, I'm really hoping I can finally, I mean, you can probably see the edges of this room are not very organized. So I'm finally hoping that if I have these sort of shallow, draw, shallow drawers that I can finally uh, have some good tool organization. So yeah, let's, let's do that. So that means I need to take five identical drawers, five inches deep, 24 and 5 eighths by 19, and that's sort of the unfinished drawer. So what I've done here is this is, uh, this is most of a sheet of plywood that I have ripped into three pieces that are four feet wide by the 24 and a half, and then the uh, rest of it I've ripped out a bunch of five foot inch length. So all in all with the uh, dust hood and the drawers this has so far consumed two sheets of half inch plywood and then the cabinet itself about a sheet and a half of three quarter inch plywood. So now I just need to cut these into the sizes of each drawer. So the sides will be made up of these five inch uh, bits, so it'll be five inches deep. These will be the bottoms. All right, so I am going to start making the drawers, um, and I'll show you how I plan to put these together. Now, depending on how much you care about what this looks like, you could potentially use pocket holes. If you use pocket holes, then the joinery will be hidden. Um, but as I've said many times, I don't particularly care what this looks like. So this is the sort of front and back, and these are the sides. So well, if you look at how I'm planning to put this together, notice that I have uh, the um, sides of this on the outside, right? So that means that like when you're making your measurements, so the opening turned out to be 25 and 5 eighths. That width is entirely determined by the size of my miter saw. So that means that I have to take off half an inch of drawer width, right? So these are 24 and 5 eighths. 
when you're cutting uh, the front and back, you have to take off an inch for the drawer pulls, but you also have to take off the width of the plywood. Now you can do this either direction, but whatever direction you do it and make sure you're accounting for the width of the plywood. And, and also remember this is half inch plywood, but it's not exactly half an inch. So the way I did this was I measured the 24 and 5 eighths. And then I literally took two pieces of this and just drew a line on top of it so that I have the actual width of my actual plywood. So the way I'm going to join these is I'm going to use a multi-step process. You can do something different, um, but I am going to glue them and pin them temporarily. are not going to be the final way that this is held together. So there we go, glued and pinned. And then uh, it's probably smart to make sure that it fits before you go much further. Which I know you can't see, but it does. Alright, so now that this is glued and pinned, I'm going to add some screws. So between the glues, the pins, and the screws, got a nice strong drawer here that is five inches deep. All right, so here we are. Um, I am making five drawers. They're all the same, five inches high. Um, and here they all are. And then the last step is to attach the bottoms to this. Now, I mean, there's a lot of ways to do this. I am still using half inch plywood. And um, you can see that I've made this. So I'm actually going to screw it down. I glue it and screw it and all that same stuff. Uh, this is, I want this to be fairly strong. And, and again, part of the reason I'm doing this is that this, these drawers are for tools, right? So, I mean, if you're putting clothes in these drawers, you don't need to probably use half inch plywood. So, Pretty much the same as we put the boxes together. I'm going to glue it with, glue it, tack it in with pins, and then come back and add screws. Before you screw it down, this is your last chance to make sure that it's square. And um, you know, this project is this project can be fairly forgiving in some parts, right? We're not making uh, we're not making like furniture here, so that's square. We're not making furniture here, right? This is a shop table. I don't really care how good this looks, but if the drawers aren't square, then they're not going to go. Uh, you know, they're not going to slide properly. go that might be overkill but like I said I want to be able to put potentially like you know 10 20 30 kilograms of tools in these drawers and not have the bottom come out so yeah there's one drawer now I just got to do it four more times I'm gonna do that off camera All right, so it is 
time to uh, try and install my drawers. Now, I've never done this before. Um, you can see I've made a bunch of different marks. What I'm going to try to do is install this at uh, six inches. So if you remember, the drawers are about five and a half. And I've got these five six inch gaps. And so I've just measured those out on either side. And what I'm going to use is these Craig uh, jigs. This, so clamp them in place and they're square. Um, and yeah, they're pretty nice. I'll put a link to them in the description uh, if you want to give them a try. But what's nice about these, they're really a little more than uh, squares. Um, but they're just an extra set of hands, right? So yeah, six inches. So what's nice about them as well is they have a little bit of a depression here. So it's about a quarter of an inch. So by lining that up with the six inches, it actually puts the drawer slides about a quarter inch above the bottom. And so, yeah, these are the drawer slides I have. Again, I'll put a link to the description. I think they hold about 50 kilos, right? So that should be good for holding tools. Um, take out the drawer part and yeah, they just sit there. Um, so yeah, there you go, an extra set of hands um, for your drawer slide. I don't really plan on putting a, a, a face on this, any kind of frame. I just want this to function. I don't care at all what it looks like. about these uh, is that you can turn them around um, so um, yeah so uh, they have these markings one two um, that allow you to get things nice and straight so I'm just gonna line this up flush with the front of the thing, uh, the drawer slides. Uh, and now, you can put these back in. it up with the next marker so there's a one and a two and then it takes a bit of some angling but there we go there's our drawer straight and we can just pull the slides out so these just go straight to the front and <laughs> that's a drawer installed I have never built or installed a drawer before These jigs are great for DIY kind of builds like this. Pull it out a bit more. And there's a drawer. My floor's not level. So I'm just going to make sure these are attached correctly. There we go. Yeah, I'm just going to put one more screw now that these are on and straight. 
just because it came with enough for three on each side. There you go. I have never, <laughs> you watched me figure this out in real time. Never installed a drawer before, but here it is. So to do the next one, you just repeat the process. So yeah, I've marked six inches. Okay, so here they are. The drawers are in. They are not perfectly straight. So I don't know if you can see that, but this drawer sticks out a bit and so does this one. So, you know, this is not a, <laughs> this is not a video where I'm teaching you how to hang perfect drawers. But this is a video where a person who has never ever made a drawer before or hung a drawer, uh, I think has made something that's functional if not uh, very pretty. So I think this was my goal, and to be honest, I don't think I'm actually going to even put face plates on these. Uh, I think I'm just going to let this be what it is, a functional piece of shop hardware that is not that much to look at. So the next thing to do is install the drawer poles, and uh, these are just really cheap ones I got off Amazon. Came in a pack of six, which was perfect, since I have five drawers and one door. Um, to install them, this is actually not a Craig tool, although they make one. Um, I've got this handy uh, jig for uh, installing the cabinet hardware. And this is great because it's incredibly, uh, yeah, incredibly flexible. So to be honest, the easiest thing to do to use this is to like attach the hardware to the jig. And by doing that, Right, you know that that this is spaced perfectly. So, you know, I measured this and got about 38 and a half millimeters, and you know, you can confirm that. Uh, yeah, perfectly centered. And then, um, and then it's got this neat little thing so that you can hang it on the drawer, right? So, um, I know that these drawers are five and a half, so centered then is like two and three quarters, right? Yeah, so there we go. This is uh, two and three quarters. I'll put a link to this jig. So yeah, I've already marked the center of the drawer up here. And then I suppose we could clamp this on. Might be a smart idea. and drill the holes. So what's nice about these is they have these kind of metal rings that are you know, a good centimeter thick. So it really lets you drill the holes as if you had a drill press, right? It guides the thing in, you get a nice straight hole, which is pretty hard to do with hand tools. There we go. Perfectly straight um, drawer poles. So now that it's set up, I just have to make sure it's centered, and I already measured the center on this drawer. Clamp it in place. Drill the holes. Et voila! Drawer poles.
right, and that's that. Um, this is the whole build done. Obviously, putting the handle on the door is more or less the same process as putting them on the drawers. If you watched all three parts of this video and you made it to this outro, definitely leave me a comment down below, and I hope you're subscribed to the channel. Um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, if you have any comments, you know, feel free to leave bad comments, good comments. I know this isn't the most beautiful thing you're going to find someone build on YouTube, but I am pretty proud for my first adventure in uh, drawer and cabinet building, and I, this is completely what I wanted. It's 100% functional, and I kind of like the industrial look of it. Um, so thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.